Nearly a quarter million dollars allocated for business improvement projects in Scottsbluff has been approved. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the Scottsbluff City Council has given the green light to fund 10 City of Scottsbluff facade improvement grants. During last night's meeting, the council unanimously gave approval to all 10 projects, totaling more than $82,000. The latest recipients include the Midwest Theater, e and CPAs, the Elks Lodge, and Angela Philbrook State Farm Insurance. Of the $250,000 in facade grants, approximately $35,000 remains. But Councilman Jordan Colwell did ask City Manager Dustin Reef how many projects carried over. How many carried over from last year that we're still paying on from the, the total amount? We're, we're down to like four or five. Um, we finished a lot of those right before year end. Um, and there's just some supply chain issues with the ones that are remaining. All projects from the facade improvement grants need to be completed by September 30th of this year. Well, Governor Pete Ricketts was joined by the Nebraska Attorney General and head of the state patrol to highlight progress against sex and human trafficking in Nebraska. Over half of all sex trafficking prosecutions in Nebraska history have started in the past two years, with 79 human trafficking prosecutions to date, with 43 felony convictions, including the largest sex trafficking case to date in 2021. NSP Superintendent John Bolduc says awareness is really the key to fighting against the trafficking problem. In many cases, the first indicator in human trafficking cases comes from someone who has been made aware of the signs and tips off law enforcement uh, to what they have observed. Knowing the signs can make a difference in rescuing human trafficking victims, which can then lead to these investigations and ultimately successful prosecutions and rehabilitation for the victim. Bolduc noted the issue affects all communities in the state, large and small. Governor Ricketts signed a proclamation recognizing January as National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Welcome back. CASA of Scottsbluff County has kicked off a month-long initiative aimed at filling gaping holes in the juvenile court system. Executive Director Kelsey McBride explains. We have the kickoff event for our They Are Worthy event. And it is a recruitment campaign where we are partnering with um, other service organizations to recruit CASA volunteers and foster parents for our area. She says that CASA is an acronym for Court Appointed Special Advocate and the need is greater now more than ever. Yeah, yeah, so um, we train a group of volunteers to advocate for kiddos in the county court system. And those kids are in the system not because of something they did, but because of something that someone else did to them. So all of the children we work with are impacted by abuse or neglect. And um, there's a huge need for volunteers. Um, we would like to think that things don't happen here, but we have a lot of cases that come in, about an average of 100 every single year, and we only have 37 CASA volunteers. So, so with that, we're only able to serve about 30 to 40 percent of the cases that come in. And we want to be able to give every child a voice and um, be there for them while they're going through this difficult time. And uh, we are not attorneys. We're volunteers. Mm -hmm. We ask our volunteers to meet with the children monthly, get to know them, get to know the people important in the child's life, and eventually our volunteers write a report to the judge to let them know what we believe is in the child's best interest. 
to give the judge more information to make decisions about those cases. One of the agencies partnering with the They Are Worthy campaign is St. Francis Ministries and trainer Teresa Robinson says just like advocates, there's a huge need locally for foster families. St. Francis Ministries is a child placing agency. So when the children come into the system, um, we help get them placed into foster homes. And so again, a tremendous need for good foster homes. And especially in this area, um, Kelsey alluded to the fact that how many uh, cases do come in um, and a lot, a good portion of them go out of county yeah. because there's not enough foster homes. So if a child can't be placed with a family member or someone they know, if there's not a foster home in the area, then they're getting placed outside, outside. of our community. Mm -hmm. So in addition to everything that they're already dealing with, they're having to start at a new school, try to make new friends, try to figure out how um, their new teachers are, all of that, while still trying to see their parents and get back home. So it's just a lot to put on anybody, yes. um, but especially children especially that have already children. been through so yeah. much. They say that for both entities, there are some minimum requirements they're looking at. So um, CASA volunteers, we estimate about six to ten hours a month, um, and that includes continuing education time. So we do expect 12 hours of continuing ed a year, and um, but they start out with a 30-hour training. So that's, that's the biggest commitment up front is those 30 hours, but we work with you to find out what works best with your schedule and we spread it out over several weeks um, to make it work for you. And um, we want you to feel well prepared for the role that you're taking on. So we don't wanna to provide too much information at once. We want you to have some time to process it and um, look through that, make sure you're comfortable with it, ask any questions. But after that, six to 10 hours a month, we ask people to commit to staying with a case for uh, the average case takes about a year and a half to two years. And because of the purpose of CASA, of being that constant in a child's life, we like our volunteers to be able to stay with the case from when it opens to when it closes. Um, in order to become a foster parent, you need 30 hours of pre-service training and um, then a continued 12 hours each year to keep your license. Man, we are so We're good. We're so good, aren't we? <laughs> um, and that looks like um, meeting with tra the trainer for three hours a week for 10 weeks, um, along with lots of paperwork and background checks and all of that. Um, home studies, self studies, home studies, but they do get extensive training and um, <clears throat> we really focus on trauma because all of the kids coming into care have been traumatized in some form or fashion, um, abuse and neglect, and it's trauma just in itself being removed from the home. If you're interested in helping out, McBride says there are two more local events planned for this month. We have two more, more. in-person events planned, and then we also have a social media campaign going on at the same time. And that is just kind of to make people aware of the reality of children yes. in foster uh -huh. care <clears throat> and um, how people can become a foster parent or become a CASA volunteer to give those children a safe place and to give them a voice in court. Any of the just upcoming age events? Majority singles. We have married singles, um, just have to be age of majority. And open up your heart and your home and just bring a child in and remember that they're just a, ch a child. It doesn't matter if they're six or 16, they're just a child that needs a loving, stable family environment. Those events will be held at Cappuccino and Company on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. and then the following Thursday, January 27th at 11.30 a.m. at the Lakota Lutheran Church, both in Scotts Bluff. Well, coming up after the break, Bill Boyer's in with your midweek forecast. Tell of that right after the break here on KNEB.TV News.
The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant and full service gas leader. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Well, we have a cloudy to partly cloudy skies here through the evening. We'll clear off as we get towards sunrise tomorrow. Temps are going to be much colder out there today. We had quite cold conditions coming tonight. More snow on the way late tomorrow. It's going to be a nice weekend, but another system arrives early next week. 55, remember that? That seems like a lifetime ago. That was just yesterday after a morning low of 25. We've had a little bit of moisture in the rain gauge, uh, a trace uh, to a couple of hundreds melted down out of this snow. Well, there it is. The cold air has arrived, and uh, we're on the backside of it. The very cold air just off to the north of us, but certainly a swath here of cold temps across the uh, Cornhusker State into portions of eastern Wyoming to the north of those lines. We've got single digits, and to the south of that area, we've got temps in the teens, None of them are overly warm at all, and winds are thankfully light, under 10 miles an hour, and some gusts around 15 or so in the eastern portions of the region, but that's enough to drop wind chills into the single digits above and below zero. Some areas holding on to 10 for a wind chill right now. Getting on the bus tomorrow, the skies are going to be sunny. The temps are just going to be cold, 9 when you head out the door, and on the way home, we'll add about 30 to that and maybe Melt this snow that's on the ground out there as temps climb to near 40. Future cast for tonight shows some clouds early, maybe even a flurry or snow shower. Those clouds will depart to the east, clearing skies late tonight and lows that are going to fall down into the single digits. Some areas below zero tonight for lows. Very cold air moderates some tomorrow with sunny skies out there for the most part. Any clouds in the morning in the east will drift off and we'll have a sunny day tomorrow coming for pretty much all the area. Late tomorrow night, again after midnight, here comes the next system with a little light snow in here that will come in through Friday as well. And uh, we're looking for high temperatures tomorrow in the 30s to near 40 degrees. Now, uh, precip and snowfall forecast with this system, this really only takes into account uh, what we're expecting to see through tomorrow mo- or through Friday morning. We're going to probably add a little more snow to this as we go into Friday during the day. Maybe an inch in some areas, a couple inches not out of the question, a a little bit of light to moderate snow. Clear, cold, 8 tonight for a low. Tomorrow, sunny, a little warmer, 41 your expected high. Our seven-day forecast, we bring in those snow showers late tomorrow night into Friday. Clearing out and warming up for the weekend. Look at Sunday, back to near 53. Windy conditions early next week with another system dropping us back into the 30s, and I think we will see a little bit of light snow possible with that system as well. Why love a rain garden? Let me count the ways. Rain gardens contain and filter water runoff while recharging our underground water supply. They provide habitat for birds, bees, and beneficial insects. Native perennials give four seasons of color and texture, beautifying a home while increasing its value. Established gardens are low maintenance, low water landscape features. Colorful, functional, and sustainable. Rain gardens. Brought to you by Tri-City Stormwater. Our water, our responsibility. Hey, I've been hanging out here a long time outside of Panhandle Auto Group, and boy, do they have a great selection of vehicles. And their sales team is great to work with, and you can also get your vehicle serviced in detail, too. Welcome to Panhandle Auto. This is Sam Serta, General Sales Manager. It's been our pleasure to serve you for the past two years. At Panhandle Auto, we have a seat for everybody. Whether you need a vehicle for yourself, a son or daughter, our team will go above and beyond to satisfy your needs and even your dreams. So again, thank you from Sam Serta, General Sales Manager at Panhandle Auto, for allowing us to earn your business. At Panhandle Auto, it's time for something different. Thank you. 
The Evergreen Credit Card by FNBO. Earn unlimited 2% cash back on every purchase, every day, everywhere. Never worry about expiring points or category restrictions. Plus, there's no annual fee. Only from the Great Big Small Bank, a bank ever ready for you to earn more, wherever life leads. Evergreen by FNBO. For this week's featured pet of the week, we meet Scar, a 10-year-old domestic medium-haired cat that has all the cuddles to keep you warm on these cold Nebraska nights. Wise, experienced, kind, gentle, and loving are all words that perfectly describe Scar. With a few years under his belt, Scar has been around long enough to know that the best things in life are constant cuddles, good food, and plenty of rest in the sunshine. His adoption cost is just $25, which includes his neuter, microchipping, and vaccination. Plus, whoever adopts Scar also gets a $25 Murdoch's gift card. So, if you have some space in your home and your heart to give this furball a great forever home, Scar is the man for you. The Evergreen Credit Card by FNBO. Earn unlimited 2% cash back on every purchase, every day, everywhere. Never worry about expiring points or category restrictions. Plus, there's no annual fee. Only from the Great Big Small Bank. A bank ever ready for you to earn more, wherever life leads. Evergreen by FNBO. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor. If you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. Take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar.
The Community Calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. Panhandle Trails Intercity Public Transit, based in Alliance, Nebraska, is the only intercity bus serving Nebraska Panhandle communities and Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Panhandle Trails operates a regularly scheduled bus service, assisting you in making connections with Greyhound bus partners, regional airports, healthcare, employment and education opportunities, shopping, family, friends, and more. Panhandle Trails serves the general public of all ages and offers accessible transportation for those with special mobility needs. Let Panhandle Trails help you make your connection. Call 308-761-8747. Swipe right, swipe left, endlessly searching. Finding the perfect match isn't always perfect, but it can be when it comes to finances. Nora found the perfect business loan. Jenny opened her first savings account. Grammy loves her checking account. We found a match for Wilson Farms. The Sandersons were matched with a mortgage. Regardless of your financial situation, Platte Valley Bank will match you with the perfect solution. Find your match at Platte Valley Bank. And finally tonight, forensic evidence would be collected upon arrest for felony charges under a bill discussed yesterday in the Nebraska legislature. LB 496, which was sponsored by Omaha Senator Robert Hilkeman, would require an adult charge with a felony crime of violence or burglary to provide a DNA sample to law enforcement at the time of booking or to the court during a first appearance. DNA is the 21st century fingerprint. And we need to give law enforcement every opportunity to use the technical devices that we have. And therefore, that's what I want you to take into consideration of this bill. Opponents of the bill say the process in the bill could easily lead to racial profiling and hamper citizens' due process. Lawmakers were able to string out debate long enough that they had to recess before taking a vote on the measure. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.